This is the heart. This is the center. In fact, let me show you visually. Uh, we've, we've seen our Father which art in heaven focus me and thy kingdom come control me and thy will be done lead me. Now right here is number four of seven. And so there are three to go, three we've already seen, and right at the heart is this supply me, God. So that's interesting. Now let's keep going. God, from this verse, offers us some really simple lessons, and I'll just run through them with you. Uh, the first lesson is God invites us to pray for our personal physical needs. You know, some people think that to be spiritual, they just have to be invisible, you know, and they just, you know, they, in fact, someone put it this way. If you're standing, freezing, and shivering in the rain, and someone has in their hands C.S. Lewis's, you know, writings or a sweater, which would you take? It's un not unspiritual to say, I'd take the sweater. Because God is not interested in us going through life shivering and freezing and carrying around, you know, a monumental tome of information. God invites us to pray for our personal physical needs. There's nothing wrong with it. And this give us this day our daily bread is a reminder at the heart of prayer is the fact that we're frail and human and needy. And by the way, God designed all of our systems. God designed us to want food. God designed us to love uh, various things. You know, there, there are the artsy people and there are the rugged people and there are the every kind of people. God designed all of those things. So, he wants us to come to him with our physical needs. Secondly, God invites us to pray for things that seem small and insignificant. I mean, to ask for daily bread when someone else is praying for, you know, the conversion of the, you know, uh, Wachuca people, it would seem that my daily bread is not as significant as the Wachuca tribe that, that has not yet heard the gospel, but the Lord puts this at the heart of the prayer, and God invites us to pray for what would seem very small and insignificant. If that prayer reflects our desire to connect with the God of the universe to provide it, because did you know, if you can connect for daily needs, you can connect for reaching the world. But sometimes the daily needs is not reflected in our lives because we don't need him that much. And that's why this prayer is the heart of what the Lord wants us to know, that we need to live in daily dependence on his supply that if he doesn't give me the strength, if he doesn't give me the grace, if he doesn't give me the boldness, if he doesn't give me the I won't be able to accomplish what he wants me to do. Well, the next element is God invites us to need him to get along every day. See, that's the whole thing. It's not just our personal physical needs that are small and insignificant. God invites us to begin a habit lifelong of needing him. That's what the daily part is. Okay. So God invites us to pray for our personal physical needs, even the small and insignificant, and he wants us to get along uh, each day only with him. But here it gets worse. I mean, this one was bad enough. I mean, already several of you, uh, you know, probably think that I've been reading the Communist Manifesto, you know, and next thing you're going to do, we're going to have a commune and give everything up and go barefooted. Uh, but look at this next one. Not only do we need... God, to make it every day. Do you notice what it says? Give us this day our daily bread. Do you know what's inherent in this prayer? God invites us to live in community with other believers. In other words, what he's saying is, Lord, I'm not just praying that I make it, that I have enough money to pay my rent and pay my insurance and buy my car and fix my house. I want to be able to have you provide enough so I can help others that are in need. Whoa, that's scary. That it's not about me acquiring and amassing enough. I mean, but you know what God said? My goal in life is not for me to have as much as possible, but for me to need God completely and hook his provision for me to me helping others. And that's an astounding thing. Okay. So, 
that we could, we could simplify this middle petition to say, Lord, help me to get used to always needing you to provide for me so I can have your love and compassion, des- compassionate desire to help others who are also in need. Did you notice that's how Jesus went through life? Do you know what his most frequent emotion was as, as Jesus lived his life on earth? The most frequent emotion Jesus exhibited is compassion. That was his life. And we want to be like him.